It's no secret that I am a huge fan of Sailor Moon Classic. At the start of my fandom, when I was a teenager, I would watch the raw episodes in Japanese without subtitles and I wouldn't understand a word anyone was saying, and I kept wishing in the back of my mind, hey, wouldn't it be cool if there were like a subtitle version of this, but they'd break down all of the individual words and really explain why everything meant what it does? And I am here to make my teenager's wishes come true by doing just that with the first episode of Sailor Moon Classic. upon this video. I'm Sarah. I am a professional Japanese to English anime and game translator. I started out as just a fan and now I am a professional translator. I get paid to do it. It's my bread and butter. It's how I make a living, but I'm also still a fan. I like to use anime and anime songs to teach Japanese on this channel. So if that sort of thing interests you, go ahead and check out my huge library and my playlists. I also have another video that I did before on um, one scene from this episode of Sailor Moon. It happens towards the end of the episode where um, Usagi and Luna speak for the first time. Go check that out if you haven't already. But now I'm starting over at the very beginning of the episode. I plan on going all the way through the episode, um, kind of scene or two at a time. So if that sort of thing interests you, subscribe and maybe support me on Patreon. Let's get to it. Atashi is the feminine form of I. If you saw my video on pronouns, it's up there. It's basically watashi, but kind of shortened, and it is feminine and also young, a little bit kind of valley girlish. Tsuki no Usagi, so that is her name, and in Japanese culture, if you weren't aware, it is surname first. So Tsuki no is her family name, her surname. Usagi is her name what we would call her first name, but it gets really confusing if you use terms like first name and last name when you're switching the orders up depending on what language you're speaking, and then they second guess you, and you second guess them. So surname and name, just to clear things up. So about her name Tsukino, Tsuki literally means moon, and then no, in this case, uh, the kanji does mean something, but in this case, uh, we ignore what the kanji itself means. It's just a place marker for a hiragana no, um, which means apostrophe s. So usagi means bunny or rabbit, so her full name means rabbit of the moon or moon rabbit. So the reason why that no is in kanji instead of hiragana is that it makes it look more like a name. Like a person's name would not be a kanji followed by a hiragana character. So that's why it's no in kanji, even though we're not really taking the meaning from that. And if you notice all the other characters, not all the other characters, but all the other like main senshi, their surnames also are something no. So her name is Moon Rabbit, and the reason why uh, Usagi, uh, Rabbit is her name, even though Usagi is not a Japanese name, like people would not name their daughter Usagi. I mean, they probably do now because Sailor Moon got really popular, but yeah, Usagi is not a traditional Japanese girl's name, but this is comic booky, so we can get away with it. And the reason why her name is Bunny is because in Japanese folklore, um, rabbits are said to be up on the moon um, grilling mochi. So in Western culture, we have uh, that the moon is made of cheese. So if Sailor Moon were originally conceived in, in like America or something, her name might be Brie, <laughs> you know, to go with cheese. So the pun is completely lost on us, but that is why her name is Bunny. And that's why you see in the series all this like rabbit motif uh, stuff in there. Juyong Sai Chuni. So Juyong is 14 and then Sai means um, years old or age. So any, any number followed by Sai means like I am this many years old. So Juyong Sai means 14 years old. Uh, Chuni, uh, to the untrained ear, you might have thought that that was Juni which is 12, and I in fact have seen that mistranslated in fan subs uh, of other anime series when somebody is saying their age with a chu and they think it's ju, but it's not. So chu in this case, it is, uh, if you look at the kanji here or here, here, I'll put the kanji here. If you look at the kanji here, uh, chu means um, the middle of something. So if I were to add a gaku or a gakko to the end of the chu, that would be middle school. So chu ni means uh, the second year of middle school. So it's not that uncommon in Japanese culture for you to say, instead of your age, for you to say uh, what year you are in school. So that's why she included that. Seikaku means like, as for my personality, because seikaku is personality, 
and then wa is this particle that is like, okay, I'm going to tell you everything that comes before me. So seikaku is the topic of the sentence, my personality, as from a personality, something, something, something. So seikaku wa, um, as from a personality, um, chotto, she's kind of trailing off like, chotto. It's, it's what people say when they're like, oh, I'm going to say something kind of awkward, like, oh, I don't really know what to say about my personality. Usually somebody might say something like seikaku wa akarui. Uh, it's just like, I'm a cheerful personality, or seikaku wa like, omoshiroi, or something, like, I'm a funny person, or something, but she's like, ah, my personality, um, uh, ochokochoi is ditzy, klutzy, and then de um, is this particle where we're gonna just kind of list some things, so I'm ochokochoi and I'm something else. That's what de means in this case, so ochokochoi de, I am ditzy and nakimushi means crybaby. So um, my personality is ditzy crybaby. <laughs> and then kana means I guess. So my personality is uh, ditzy crybaby. And then her mom, whose name is Ikuko, which incidentally is kind of a pun. Um, iku, um, if you've heard kyo iku or tai iku, the kanji iku can mean uh, to raise or to teach or to, to nurture something or someone. And then ko is a very common suffix for a female name. It, it kind of means child, but it also kind of means girl child. So her mom's name literally means like the nurturer girl. <laughs> anyway. She says, Usagi, hachiji sugita wa yo. So hachiji is eight o'clock. Ji at the end of any number is o'clock. So hachiji is eight o'clock, ichiji is one o'clock, niji is two o'clock. Sugita means it is past. So hachiji sugita means it is past eight o'clock. And then wa yo is this emphatic feminine way of ending a sentence. Like usagi, it's past eight o'clock, you know. And then usagi screams a bunch in <laughs> her classic usaginess. And then she screams, Mo! Uh, Mo is, is, is an arg kind of frustrated exclamation. It can be damn, it can mean Jesus, it can mean yarg, <laughs> or God. Um, I think God kind of works pretty well with Usagi in this case since she's a young teen. Motto hayaku okoshite yo, mama no baka! So motto uh, means more. And then if you add an adverb after motto, it, it means more something li, right? And so the adverb we're adding in this case is hayaku. Um, the non-adverb version of hayaku would be hayai, which means early or fast. So hayaku would mean um, quickly or early li. <laughs> so motto hayaku would mean earlier or faster. Okoshite is the imperative form of okosu, which is to wake up someone. So okoshite, like if I'm telling you, uh, hey, hachiji ni okoshite, chodai, it means, um, hey, please, hey, will you wake me up at eight o'clock? And then if you add a yo at the end of that, it's like, come on, you were supposed to, or you should have, it has that ring to it. So motto hayaku okoshite yo means, ah, like you should have woken me up earlier. Or it's kind of a sarcastic, like, hey, thanks for waking me up earlier. It kind of has a sarcastic ring to it as well. And then mama no baka. So if you watch a lot of anime, you have probably at some point come across a character saying, insert character's name and then no and then baka. And if you follow the rules for no that I outlined earlier in this video, how no means apostrophe s or of the, it doesn't make sense, right? It means like mom apostrophe s idiot, or it means idiot of mom. So that does not make sense, right? So I have yet another way that no is used. Um, if you put it between two nouns, like mama and baka, mom and idiot, uh, it doesn't always mean apostrophe s, it doesn't always mean of. Sometimes what no does, and what it's doing in this case, is it's changing the first noun into an adjective. Let that sink in for a moment. So mom is an adjective for idiot. So it's basically an idiot that is a mom. An idiot that is mom-like. <laughs> an idiot that is mom. So it's basically a way of saying, mom, you're such an idiot, or stupid mom, 
But yeah, I used to be so confused of why people would say, like I remember in Shigi Yugi, Miyako would say, Tamahome no Baka! And it was like, that doesn't make sense. Tamahome's idiot? The idiot of Tamahome? It didn't make sense to me, but that's why it makes sense. That's why it works. Is because no, in this case, changes the first noun into an adjective. <laughs> And then her mom answers, Nandomo okoshita no yo? Uh, Nandomo means uh, countless times, time and time again, many times. Okoshita, so okoshite, we learned, is the imperative form of to wake. So it means wake me up. I'm commanding you, wake me up. Uh, but okoshita means uh, I woke you up. And notice again, nobody's using pronouns. Usagi's mom didn't say, Watashi wa anata wo nandomo okoshita no yo, and that's, that's how you would say it. Those are the particles and everything that you would use if you did use the pronouns for, you know, I, me, and you. But Japanese, as you'll notice, they often just omit pronouns altogether. And it can be very confusing when you're first learning, but once you're familiar with the language, uh, you can really easily glean from context, like who's talking, who you are talking about, it's not as confusing as it seems when you're first learning. But anyway, nandomo okoshita no yo? That means, uh, but I did wake you up many times. Because <laughs> the no yo at the end of this is like, uh, but yeah. <laughs> it's this emphatic feminine, I did though. Sono tabi ni chanto henji shita janai. Sono tabi ni means um, whenever that happened or each time. So basically every time that I did wake you up or whenever I woke you up, uh, henji shita. So henji suru means to answer someone. Henji by itself is just an answer, it is a noun. Uh, and then if you add suru to the end of that noun, it turns it into a verb. So henji is an answer, henji suru is to answer someone, and then henji shita changes it into the past tense, answered. So whenever I woke you up, um, you, you answered me. So now the janai at the end of this sentence, um, if you're a beginning student of Japanese, you might have learned that janai is the way you negate something. So like if I say, uh, if you ask me, ichigo wa, ichigo wa suki? Like, do you like strawberries? And if I say, uh, ie ichigo wa suki janai, um, I'm saying, no, I do not like strawberries, which is a total lie, I love strawberries. <laughs> However, in this case, janai is actually more like a, isn't it the case that? And it, it, it all kind of comes down to inflection. Sometimes the grammar will tell you if the person means it as a genuine negation of what they're saying, or if the person is, is more like asking a question. Like, isn't it the case that? Didn't you? Like, didn't you do your homework versus you didn't do your homework? So in this case, she's making a complete thought with henji shita. That's like, you answered. And then if you add janai, henji shita janai. Like, you answered, didn't you? Whereas if she was trying to say you didn't answer, she would say henji shinakatta. So subtle difference, and to a beginner, that can be incredibly confusing. Um, but it's something that over time you'll pick up and you'll be able to figure out um, when people are actually negating what they're saying and when they're just being like, isn't it the case that? Or didn't you? Usagi responds with shiranai mon. And <laughs> literally shiranai means uh, to not know something. And again, no pronoun. No, atashi wa shiranai, um, it's just shiranai. Um, mon at the end is this very emphatic, it's a very emphatic um, response. So her mom was saying, hey, I, I woke you many, I, I woke you many times and whenever I did, you answered me, you know, so weren't you awake? And she's like, and when she's adding, when she's responding with, I don't know mon, it means, I, I know nothing about that shit. <laughs> All right, so I don't know. Um, well, well, literally that is what she's saying. It's not at all a good localization for um, the sentiment behind what she's saying. Shiranai mom is, it's kind of this sarcastic like, like hell I know, or, or, it's, or it can be kind of a sarcastic like, oh yeah, I totally knew that, <laughs> or that's news to me. Um, it's, it's a very sort of emphatic, defiant, um, kind of sarcastic. Uh, way of saying, way of responding to what her mother was saying. And then her mom calls her back, ah, Usagi. And then Usagi says, Nani, soiden no. So, Nani is what? 
Um, isoi den no. So isoi deru means I am in a hurry. So isogu is to hurry, and then isoi deru means um, I am hurrying, uh, or I am in a hurry in better English. And then if you drop the ru and replace it with n, all that really is is it's just lazy. Um, it's kind of like changing cannot into can't or do not into don't. So isoi den no means like I'm in a hurry, damn it. <laughs> And then her mom says, Obento iranai no? Obento, you probably know because we've adapted the word, it means box lunch. Uh, iranai means don't want or don't need. And then the no, it's this feminine way of ending it in a question mark. It's like, don't you want your lunch? And then Usagi comes in the screen and, and says, Iru. <laughs> So iru is the affirmative version. So iranai is to to not want, to not need something, whereas iru is to want or to need something. Now, usually I wouldn't, if I wanted a lunch, if I wanted my bento for my mom, I wouldn't say like as a sentence by itself, o bento iru, like I need my lunch or I want my lunch. I would probably say like o bento chodai if I'm kind of rude or like o bento kudasai or something. Like I'd, I'd say that, but I wouldn't say o bento iru. Um, that's kind of weird, Japanese. They don't really say that. Um, so it's funny. It's basically your mom saying like, don't you want your lunch? It would be like Usagi coming in saying, want or do want. <laughs> and then Usagi flies out the door and says, itekimasu. So if you watch a lot of anime, you might have already picked up the itekimasu. Um, it's something that people say when they're leaving. Okay, it literally means uh, go come. <laughs> and again, no pronouns, but uh, it literally means like, I am going and then I am coming back, basically. So um, it's just something that they say when they're leaving though. So we, when we leave, we don't say, I'm going and then I'm coming back. <laughs> and that sounds really weird. We just say goodbye. Um, or we might say, I'll be back. Um, and sometimes when people say, itekimasu, like if they were like, chotto konbini e itekimasu or something, it's like, oh, I'm just going out to the convenience store. I'll be back soon. It's like that kind of meaning. But just translating it as bye or I'm going to school, bye, or something like that, that works. And then Usagi comes upon the little kids bullying Luna. Kora, yame na sai! And she says, Kora, yame na sai! So Kora is like, hey you! Yame na sai is, is the imperative, kind of polite, <laughs> but imperative form of to, um, to stop, which is yameru. So yame na sai is like, hey, stop that, cut that out. And now a word from our sponsor. Has this ever happened to you? Man, I love Sarah's videos so much. I just wish I didn't have to watch them for free. What am I going to do with all of this money? Patreon can fix that. Patreon? Patreon? If you want to support this channel, check out my Patreon. One dollar gets your name in the credits. Three dollars gets you access to a secret monthly video. Five dollars gets you a song in Japanese written about you by me. And for ten dollars, I will make you a video about anything you want me to. Link is in the video description below. Back to the show. <laughs> And then, mo. so mo, we're having that again. This is, oh, God. Mataku, um, before that, um, it's, it's kind of this emphasizing uh, word that people will add before another word in a sentence. Like, mataku um, akarimasen would mean, like, I don't understand at all. Um, but if you just say mataku by itself, it doesn't exactly mean anything in the literal sense. But um, if localized properly, it means something like, good grief or oh Jesus, or geez, uh, it has, has that kind of ring to it. So matakumo is like for crying out loud or for Christ's sake or something like that. And then she goes to Luna and says, Kai so ni ne, yoshi yoshi. So if you know Japanese at all, you probably know kawaii, which means cute or pretty or adorable. Um, but kawaii so ni, um, note that there is not two eyes in kawaii so. It's not kawaii so, <laughs> it's kawaii so. Slight subtle difference, and the kanji are different too. So kawaii's kanji are this, and then kawaii so is this kanji. So you'll notice completely different kanji. And now Falai is mewing. <laughs> Lele, what's up? What do you want? <laughs> oh, anyway, kawaii so ni means, oh, you poor thing. 
Yoshi Yoshi means they're there. It's like when you pat someone on the head and say Yoshi Yoshi. Uh, Yoshi by itself can mean good. So it's like, oh, it's all good. But uh, it really means they're there. Or good girl, good girl. And then she notices Luna's weird forehead and she says, and she says, ara, which is this sort of this feminine, usually feminine kind of gasp, like, oh, like, oh, whoa. Wow, Bansoko. Uh, you might remember if you saw my other video uh, breaking down the scene with her and Luna, Bansoko is like band aid or bandage. And then Hararechatta. So Hararedu is to have something, you know, stuck to you. So Bansoko Hararedu means like to have a bandage stuck to you. And then if you change, if you drop, if you drop the ru and change it to Chatta, um, that's like, uh-oh, <laughs> this bad thing happened. So like, it's it's this verb happened, and it's a bad thing that this verb happens. So, like, uh-oh, did, did somebody put a band-aid on you? <laughs> so, hagasu is to take something off. Hagashite hoshi. So if you have a verb that ends in su, and you drop the su, and change it to shite hoshi. It means you want to have that verb done to you. So hagashite hoshi means um, you want to have that bandage taken off of your forehead. So for another example, taberu is to eat, and tabete hoshi means um, you want to eat. That's kind of how that te hoshi works. So hagashite hoshi none um, means oh you, you want it you want it right. Uh, that's what the none means. It's like oh. Oh, yeah, you want that, right? So, oh, you want you must want that taken off, huh? And then hi hi. <laughs> One hi by itself means like yes or coming. It's a very prompt, more polite sort of response, but hi hi means sort of like okay, okay, coming up. And then she says demo kekko ni yatteru jan. So demo means but, uh kekko means fairly or pretty. Um rather ni yatteru means uh it suits you. Again, no pronouns. <laughs> We can just assume from context she's talking about Luna the cat. And then Jan, again, this is from that same Janai ending that her mom used in the um, last scene. Um, so Nyatiru Jan means, oh, but hey, that looks good, doesn't it? It doesn't mean that doesn't look good, that look doesn't suit you. It means, oh, but that look suits you, huh? Doesn't it? And then she pulls it off and sees the crescent moon and says, ah, Mikazuki no hage. So if you watched my other video of the, their conversation broken down, you know Mikazuki no hage means the crescent moon shaped bald patch. And then they have a little weird moment. Luna does a backflip and Usagi's like, whoa. And then the school bell starts ringing. <laughs> and she goes, ah, konna koto shiteru bai so konna koto is this sort of thing, or this, basically, this thing that I am doing or was doing. Um, shiteru means uh, doing. So konna koto shiteru means doing this sort of thing. And then bai means, um, a bai is like a circumstance or situation. So konna koto shiteru bai janakatta means, ah, god, I wasn't supposed to be doing this. <laughs> like, ah, like I, I was supposed to be going to school right now. I wasn't supposed to be wasting my time with this. And then her teacher, Haruda sensei. Tsuki no Usagi san. So she adds the san at the end because they're in a classroom and you'll pretty much always add a san. Um, if you're in elementary school, it will be chan for girls and kun for boys. And in middle school and high school, it's San for girls and sometimes kun for boys, sometimes san for boys, but usually it'll still be kun for boys and san for girls. But to translate it as like Miss Tsukino Usagi, um, it's not entirely correct. It's not quite that level of formality. Um, although uh, her teacher Haruna, like based off her personality, like I think she probably would call her like Miss Tsukino Usagi, <laughs> kind of like people do when, when they're mad at you. They'll be like Miss, <laughs> or they'll call you by your full name with your middle name and everything. Incidentally, Japanese people don't have middle names usually. Mata chikoku na no? So mata means again, chikoku means late, uh, like late to arrive somewhere, and then nano. It's like, are you? <laughs> it's like, you're late again? And she makes Usagi stand out in the hallway 
Um, that's an old school kind of punishment. Uh, sometimes they would stand out in the hallway holding like a bucket of water uh, as a punishment. Um, but she's just making Usagi just stand out in the hallway uh, for being late. And so he says, Hitoi! Uh, you've probably heard that in lots of anime. Um, it means cruel or mean. Um, but I like to translate it like in this case, I'd like to translate it as lame or this sucks. Because <laughs> you wouldn't really say in English, how cruel or how mean. It's like we don't quite talk like that. Uh, so I think lame or this sucks is a better uh, localization of hitoi. Okay, this is this is amusing. This is really funny. Kayoai onna no ko. So kayoai means like ah oh, frail, weak. You know this kind of uh, feminine frail and weak. Uh, onna no ko is girl. So ah oh, frail girl. Uh, Doka is hallway. Ni is a particle that is showing that something is going to take place at this location, which in this case is the hallway. Uh, tataseru means to make someone stand up. So tatsu is just to stand up, but tataseru is to make somebody stand up. So another example of this uh, conjugation is matsu, which is a verb that means to wait. Mataseru means to make someone else wait. You've probably heard that expression a lot in anime, like matase, o matase, matasete gomenne, uh, mataseta. Um, and they're always like, oh, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, did I make you wait long? Uh, that's kind of what that means. That's how that um, seru <laughs> form of the verb works. So tataseru means to make her stand. So roka ni tataseru means to make her stand up in the hallway. And then nante is like, oh my god, I can't believe that. All the stuff I said before that. <laughs> so, oh my god, I can't believe she made the, such a frail slip of a girl stand out in the hallway. Like, what was she thinking? The injustice. It's that kind of tone. It's really funny. And then, because she's Usagi. Onakasuita. <laughs> which means I'm hungry. That's a very important expression to know. So onaka is your belly, and then suita means is empty. So that's the way they say that they're hungry. They say onaka suita, like my 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 insides are empty. <laughs> that's what they say I'm hungry. You can also say hara heta, which is similar, like hara is your, your belly, and then heta means like um, the resources have been depleted, like there's no more stuff in there. Choshoku nuki da mon ne. So choshoku is breakfast. Nuki means without. So if you are eating sushi, by the way, and you don't want wasabi, like me, because wasabi is disgusting, you say wasabi nuki kudasai. So wasabi nuki would mean without without wasabi in there. So choshoku nuki means without breakfast. So da mon ne. Again, it's like, you know, <laughs> it's this very emphatic. It's like, oh yeah, man, I didn't have breakfast. Of course I'm hungry. I didn't have breakfast. And then she's starting to say itadakimasu, but she doesn't get all the way through it because Haruna catches her. And itadakimasu is, again, it's one of those things that you can't translate it literally because people sound weird if you translate it literally. It literally means to partake of something, but it's what people say when they're about to eat. So if I translate itadakimasu, I usually translate it as like, this looks delicious, or diving in, or my compliments to the chef, or something like that. And then her teacher says, Tsukido-san, nani shiten no? So, nani shiten no? That's a phrase that means, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> or what are you doing? But because um, she changed nani shiteru no to nani shiten no, it's a lot slangier. It's a lot rougher. So what the hell are you doing is a pretty good translation of nani shiten no? Sonna koto da kara. So <laughs> I've gone over this in previous videos and I should probably do a video just explaining the aso ko do uh, words because they're huge and they're everywhere and they're really important and valuable to know. So um, sonna koto, it literally means that thing. However, uh, sonna, um, is referencing you. <laughs> it's not referencing just that ambiguous, that thing. It means that thing that you are doing. Sonna koto. So sonna koto da kara, it's because you are like that. It's because you do things like show up late and eat out in the hallway. Akaten uh, literally means red mark. Um, and it basically means you flunk a test. You get an F. So akaten. 
akaten o toru means to to get an F. So akaten o toru desu yo. So the n desu yo means um, again, it's just very emphatic. Like this is why, <laughs> this is why you keep feeling tests because you keep showing up late and you keep like eating your lunch at breakfast. <laughs> And then Usagi sees the score and says Sanju ten. So Sanju is 30. And then if you add 10 to the end of a number, it means points for that number. So Sanju ten means 30 points or, you know, 30% on her test, which actually, in my general experience in Japan, um, I guess maybe they grade on a curve. Uh, but it's unusual for somebody to get like in the 90s or even 100%. So sanjutten, like a 30%, is actually not quite as bad as 30% in the United States would be on a test. Uh, but it's still bad. It's still an F. And then how do I answer? So, like, that's right. <laughs> 30%. So we went through a few scenes and my throat is very sore. I hope that was useful for you guys. And maybe now you can go back and watch that episode with the knowledge of these words and piece it all together. Like this video if you like it, share it with somebody who might want to learn Japanese or who loves Sailor Moon. And again, if you haven't already, go back and watch the other video that I did about this episode. And I'll see you next time, maybe. That sounded really clingy. And as I watched it as a teenager, <laughs> when I was a fan and eh, I don't know if you heard that, but that's my kitten mewing in the background. <laughs> This little brat won't shut up. Okay, I'm gonna let you roam around, okay? Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, it's Kino. <laughs> like this video if you like it. <laughs> okay, I won't. I won't exploit you. I'm sorry.